everyone, my name is Andrew Summers and I love building modern military. And so, taking it from right to left here, we have what I call the AH-65 Apache-ish. I call it the Apache-ish because it's sort of like an AH-64 except, you know, just ish. Um, so we got working rotor here, working tail rotor back there, seating for two inside. It's very swooshable. And if we move on here, we got the UH-72A Dakota, which is based on the U.S., I believe it's National Guard, UH-71 Lakota. So, just changed it up a little bit. Again here, we have working rotor. There is a rear fenestrin right there. Two gunners, two pilots, and room for four passengers inside. So it's a total of eight people in the helicopter. All right. And then, taking it to this little one, this is the MH-6 Little Bird. Uh, otherwise known as the killer egg, except with the troop pylons on there. So, small, compact, always love the helicopter, so built one. Next to it is built on the same sort of chassis as the MH6. I call it the Z-12V Scout Helicopter. Uh, if you've ever played Battlefield 4, they have the Z-11 Scout Helicopter, so that's where I derived inspiration for that. And what are some of the challenges of building these helicopters versus maybe some of the other tanks that you have on display here? Helicopters are you know, aerial vehicles, and it's difficult to get the shaping down. So you got to come up with a lot of curves. You got to come up with a lot of well aerodynamic looking features. Uh, I know on the Dakota right here, the nose was the most difficult part of it, because on the Lakota, the helicopter is based off of, it's a design where it's fully glass on the front of it, and you got to get a lot of translucent parts. You got to get a lot of slopes curves and whatnot, so that takes a little while to come up with. And just in general, when you're designing helicopters, you got to get that aerodynamic look. So that's always a bit of a, bit of a challenge when you're building helicopters. Right, understandable. And now moving on down here, we've got some more vehicles and tanks. Yes, yes, even more of those, because <laughs> I can't get enough of them. <laughs> um, so the first ones we have here are what I call the messenger armored personnel oh. vehicles. Similar design to some other vehicles I've built, they have working steering and suspension. So if we take this one right here, so we've got steering in the front, suspension as well. Doors open, though they're a little di difficult on this one. Then the whole hood opens up and you can see there's a little bit of an engine in there. So this one I'm holding right here is the mortar carrier. Right next to it is just a standard troop transport. And then next to it, we have a supply truck, which has working suspension, steering, seating for two. <laughs> and next to it is what I call the Type 8P IFV, or Infantry Fighting Vehicle. It has a fully rotating turret. It has room for 10. So, yeah, working steering and suspension components and more stuff I drive myself crazy over. <laughs> and then right next to it is a tank destroyer. It has a large turret, working steering suspension as well, opening engine compartment. And then next to that is another main battle tank of mine. So It was really difficult on this one coming up with the angles because I wanted to have it really look like it's uh, sort, of, sort of futuristic. You know, sort of copying real world designs but sort of having that little futuristic edge to it. You know, you can move it around, up and down, like that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. There. <laughs> <laughs> and then you even got a cool building in the background to kind of add to it as well. I like the broken glass technique and everything. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, same philosophy as with another display of mine. I wanted to have something that sort of spices up the builds. Because in years past, all I had was just my builds on the cloth table, and that was it. So I figured, you know, this year, let's add a little bit to this. You know, maybe a little building, come up with a base, and lo and behold, here's what I got. And it seems like you, you usually leave room for minifigs and things inside these builds. Oh, does definitely. that make them uh, fairly sturdy, or how does that work? Do they fall apart easily because you have all that room in there for the minifigs? They're actually fairly sturdy. If I take the infantry fighting vehicle here, and I take off the turret, I can also take off this area here. And you can see inside, the walls, they're pretty sturdy. You know, you could pick it up, you could play around with it a little bit. So you got the seating in there for all the minifigures, and then you got the hatch for a driver. But yeah, even with the minifigures, I always try to make them very sturdy, very playable. Uh, of course, some builds are a little bit less sturdy than others, 
But for the most part, I try to design my stuff so that I can play around with it. You know, because yeah. it's fun playing around with this stuff, right? <laughs> it is. That's the kind of what it's meant for. It's Lego, you know. Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, if you'll, every now and then you'll catch me on my bed just rolling them around. It's just fun. Yeah. Yeah, so here's the turret. These panel pieces make good seats where you can get too many figures in there. And then, of course, I got the guy with the gun and the automated turret up there. So I can seal it back up here. A little finicky sometimes, so... We'll call it good for now. There you go. Well, that's all very impressive. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about those builds. Very cool. No problem. Thank you for having me on.